Hey, what's up? Welcome to another video upload from Aspiric Attitude. My name is David. I am from Melbourne, Australia. I have autism. I have a speech difficulty, speech impairment, a speech impairment. I'm on the Spurger syndromes, and that's why I always call myself an Aspie. Before I begin this video content, have you yet subscribed to this channel, Aspie Attitude? Have you also ring this notification bell to keep up to date with Aspie Attitude? As I begin this video content as normal, this is going to be for the first time. I'll be discussing the one topic in several parts back to back. What I really mean about this is, this is from episode 166 that you're watching right now, and it's going to be up to episode 168. I'll be telling you my life story from the 29th of December 1979 up to the day I published episode 168. The friends that I had made in my whole entire lifetime in the last 41 years. It's for episode 166. This will be part one, starting from 1979 and working its way up till November 1998. At the top right of the screen here, I'll tell you what year that the story is actually set in and you'll just see how the year will roll by and it's going to be in that part of the screen that I'm pointing here. I'll still leave the thumbnails for my previous video uploads that I've done in the last few years when necessary and also along here I'll still use some captions when necessary because like the reason why I want to do this is because there is a myth that people on the autism spectrum don't want friends but I reckon this is an absolute lie so how it is though like it's time to travel back in time starting from here 1979 where I was born and the story will officially begin I mean the full story on the February 1987 so I'll explain when I get to the next part so how it is though what we're waiting for okay let's go and explore my life's past shall we to get to the main point of this video so since I was born on the 29th of December 1979 that was the year that I was born and I'll get the year clock ticking as well I'm going to be calling this for a video so I'm going to say this once how it is back in my early childhood when I once lived in Sydney I never established any friendships whatsoever because this didn't matter at the end of 1986, I had relocated from Sydney to Melbourne. The story of my childhood friends will all begin in 1987 when I was seven years old, when I began to establish and bond friendships for the first time in my life. It was at school, like I wasn't into mainstream education at the time, so I went to a special school for autistics called Erebina and it was situated in the eastern suburbs of Melbourne. It was only just from the very first day I became best friends with another person who's on the autism spectrum and also an Aspie and he was the same age as me and his name was Jared. And there was only six of us in this small group at that special school called Erebina. Yeah, my best friend was Jared, and also I had a monosyllabolic classmate. His name was also David. And I also can remember a guy named Marcus who had echolalia. So I'll show you this thumbnail. Just get this over done with anyway. And also, I did have a non-verbal classmate, and his name was Warren, and also 
there was a girl on the autism spectrum called Alexandra. And that's how I remember going to school back in 1987. And the autistic special school was called Erebina, and which I referred to where the grass was greener. So my friendship with Jared was very short lived until 1988. Both of us had drifted our separate ways since we both went to mainstream education. Cause like we went to separate primary schools. So like, yeah, just sort of all let it happen because at the same time, even back in 1987, I had bloomed another friendship with a person named Phil. And also next door to me, there was another person which I'll call Philip, who was a lot younger than me, but he's more of a playmate living next door. So like, I don't want to get into this, but I'm more interested in the person named Phil. I haven't mentioned anything that my family was once involved with the Scouts. So like at that time, since that my mum was a cup leader and my dad actually ran the Scout troop and also my brother was involved with Scouts. So like I started to bloom my friendship and blossom my friendship with Bill. So like I can remember back from 1988, the story about Bill was that I used to hang out with Bill at the school holiday program but that was from 1989 of course and I had him quite a few times over my house for sleepovers and sometimes I did sleep at Bill's house. Well this friendship did come to the sudden interruption when he had to relocate down to a place called the Moynton Peninsula at the end of 1990. So like by 1991 my friendship with Bill had drifted apart and we'd never seen each other until it was in 2018 that I did make contact with Bill again through Facebook and there was just no interest of us becoming the friends that we were back in the late 80s which was from 1987 up till 1990. Therefore, Jared and Bill were the most perfect friendships back in his times, back in my childhood and I did all right letting go of Jared and letting it to drift away but I did actually find it extremely difficult to let go of Bill. So now I had to go back into 1988 when I first began to attend primary school entering into mainstream education. For all I could remember at that time there were just so many students because as I mentioned Erebina back in 1987 there was really only six of us in one classroom but it just got so weird for me now experiencing 30 people in one classroom and this is all going back to when I was eight years old in the start of primary school it was just so hard knowing who any of my friends were at the time so like around about that time as well like I used to go on a bit of elopement around the school grounds and have me start like due to my odd behaviour since it was very different. So like everyone had to raise the question like if I was retarded, but I didn't understand what the word retarded means. Well, now I do from this video upload. So like, I can tell you one friend that I had in the Sarah Primary School and his name was Lincoln. Well, just after a while when I got to know Lincoln proper, he did try to take quite a bit of advantage of me and also he's the then get to reputation of getting me into trouble at school all the time. And that's why I probably never had my sleepovers or even got to hang out with Lincoln outside of school hours and through the school holidays. So like, there was through late 1988 through to 1989 that I did keep that friendship going. So like, my friendship with Lincoln stayed within school and never had any social interactions outside of school hours. So at the time though, like, I was best friends with Phil at the time anyway. So like, I kept that friendship going up till end of 1989 after completing grade three. And now, by the time I was in grade four, come to school dressed the way I am, 
So like that was actually virtually my school uniform. Work set used to say sweat dog and sweat dog gear, but red hoodie and the red pants, just like what I'm wearing here. So like all the cool kids at primary school used to dress like that since we never really had any school uniform back in 1990. So like, as I keep mentioning Bill, even hanging out with Bill, like we used to get dressed like that too anyway. And it was in 1990 when the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was a very big thing. And how we felt like, due to Bill being in a Christian family, and due to the amount of cartoon violence, his parents banned him for watching Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. But anyway, it was just by 1990, after when Phil had relocated, yeah, my friendship with Chris did start. So, like, he turned out to be a better friend than Lincoln was. So, like, he was very kind to me when I first did it, and we all both shared the same interest with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles since that Bill wasn't allowed to watch that cartoon. So now that it was actually very hard when Bill had to relocate, but it was by the start of 1991, since it was a new year, I began to have my sleepovers with Chris. Well at that time, as I said before, he was kind and it served as a great distraction after when my best mate, Bill, had to relocate down to Moitishula. So like, from the rest of the time in primary school, I was best friends with Chris. And throughout the time though, like, we both began to share the same interest in rollerblading and inline skating. So like, I was best friends with Chris up till we graduated from primary school by the end of 1992. Well, the sad thing about it is that Chris went to a different high school from me, which Chris actually went to a public school. And where I was heading was into a private school, a private Catholic school, as I mentioned, which is called St. Joseph's. So it was in the start of 1993. So like what me and Chris both got for Christmas was a Sega Mega Drive. So like, before I was going to officially start high school, I just decided to stay in contact with Chris due to the same fact that we have the same interests in Sega as I've actually talked about back in episode 54. And also plus, we had the same interests in inline skating or rollerblading, whatever you want to call it. So like, since that 1993 was the year when I first started high school, and I did talk about high school back in episode 15. And since no one from my primary school had followed me to high school, so like it was just the same trouble that I had back in 1988 when I first started primary school back then. So like it was just all about just now trying to find my friends. So considering that finding my friends in high school was just as difficult as it was in primary school. And despite that this time, I had attended an all boys Catholic college and as I mentioned back in episode 15 as well and also plus it was just no clothes like this we're all just basically you know what it's like with all boys Catholic school and like that everyone had to dress up just like Harry Potter like as a we were attending to Hogwarts we all had to wear that stuff so like as I was waiting to find my friends in high school so like after having harsh feelings with Bill drifting away back in 1991, I did not want the same thing to happen with Chris at the time, since he was still kind to me and everything like that. We maintained the same interest in video games and inline skating. So it was on weekends in the very start of year seven, which was in 1993. I still hung out with Chris just for that. And pretty much in the course though, like, I did end up becoming friends with a person named David. And what was wrong with this other David person was the fact that like he was an outcast, he was a bit of an odd person, but I did get along with him. But his bullies turned me away from him. And then after when the bullies turned me away from David, and we had this Sri Lankan guy in a class named Devine. I'll just quickly tell you 
who Devine is. Like, we've been friends with Devine probably, say, in her fourth term, which was starting October 1993. So, like, he obviously didn't want me being friends with David. And also, there was a number student, which I don't want to get into as such, because all at the same time, though, like, I was actually becoming friends with another person named Andrew. Because Devine was into Nintendos and Andrew was into Sega. So like it was just someone in my in the same class as me who was also into Sega Mega Drives. So it was just by the end of 1993 as I became friends with Andrew. So like it was a school break before saying year eight. So like I began to have my sleepovers and we began to hang out with each other and Andrew was a lot different from Chris or Phil and a better friend to me than Devine. So like, he was a bit more into sports, a more sports oriented person. So now we go to year eight and since then like, Devine never returned to the school I went to and I've never seen Devine since then. So like, I've carried on my friendship with Andrew in the start of year eight in 1994. So like, what happened was me and Andrew at school became friends with a person named Daniel. So like, just to briefly describe Daniel, I did mention Lincoln earlier. So Daniel turned out to be a troublemaker like Lincoln was back in primary school. As it happens, me, Andrew, Daniel, and a few other acquaintances that we were hanging around with played a prank on some teachers that led to the end of the friendship with Andrew, since I had been told by my parents there was a troublemaker about influence. And my dad actually went off at me and says, go and find myself some new friends. So then after that thing, like after when I wasn't allowed to go near Andrew because my parents were was a real rat bag, since that Daniel was the troublemaker behind it. So like I fell back onto Chris on some weekends since I did about to find out that Chris wasn't the Chris that I knew from primary school, despite we were maintaining the same interests in our Seegers and our inline skates. So like, since that also Daniel had ideas taken advantage of me, just to be very manipulative, just like I explained back in episode 77, and he had a plot to prevent me from even being my own person, that's what that Daniel guy was like. And how it is though, like, then Chris turned out he maybe do the things that he wanted me to do and to prevent me from being an individual and being my own person and being myself. So like, just imagine like, Chris actually had a whip to get me to do things that I didn't want to do and be the person that I didn't want to be by cracking a whip saying, wuss. So Chris used to call me a wuss if he didn't get his way with me. Even Devine used to call me a wuss if he didn't get his way with me. So like, Chris was on the same agenda as Daniel. Well, anyway, with Daniel, on the other hand, instead of calling me a wuss, he called me a retard if I didn't do the things he wanted me to do. So like, I couldn't be friends with Daniel. So like, wuss wasn't as, didn't stun me like as he called me a retard. So like, it just sounded like that Andrew was a bad guy. He must have overheard my parents after when I've been told it's a bad influence and everything like that. So like I was in year eight, I tried connecting friends with Nathan and Matt at high school, since they were actually real cool dudes and everything like that. So like, since I was under the influence by Chris, the one who didn't go to the high school with me, well, so my friendship became too acquaintant for me to be friends with Nathan and Matt since that Nathan was into skateboards. Chris hated skateboards. And if I got into skateboards over rollerblades, I'll be a wuss. So, and he knew that Nathan was friends with Paul and Paul used to go to the same high school as Chris. So obviously Chris didn't want me ending up friends with Paul just in case, yeah, I don't know what, for some strange reason. Because by year 9 and 10, 
Nathan and Matt hung out with the majority of other students in my year level who are ableist bullies and they bullied me for being on the autism spectrum and just like these as I mentioned in episode 80 just the way I feel about the word retard so anyway just to get away from these bullies like I did try out to be friends with John, Joel and Leon since we have the same interest in art and but however it is they like they did find me very annoying and plus I was very obsessed with trains at the time so they couldn't understand like they couldn't stand me going on about trains all the time so like it was actually through year, year 11 like I, like John, Joel and Leon didn't want me hanging out with them so like I was just totally socially lost in high school where at a time I wanted to end my friendship with Chris except he was just a toxic friend who manipulated me and the only problem with Chris is he will think of me as a wuss if I liked Nirvana since the only in initiation to being friends with Nathan, Matt, John, Joel and Leon is to like Nirvana with Kurt Cobain and he hated that band and Chris had continued to try to make me the individual that I wasn't trying to sort of put me on an array of identity crisis and I was ashamed for liking the things that Chris didn't like and despite those inter trains as I mentioned in episode 67 so like he did tolerate that so like by 1997 my friendship with Chris had lost all meanings and I was into techno in 1997 and I swear I had ass tracksuits and I was shamed by Chris for not being to heavy metal, wearing real heavy metal clothes. So like, oh come on, leave me alone, just let me be me. Like, let me be the dude who wants to wear out ass tracksuits and listen to techno. So like, nah, he just insisted on putting immense pressure on me to be the person that I wasn't. So he forced me to go into that Metallica concert that took place in April 1998 despite though I was just too out of character to be into heavy metal at all. Because like, despite I was a techno person and I was slowly getting to hip hop at the time. And also, it was in 1997, I did have a friend called Noddy. So like, it only lasted up till early 1998. So like, he was a friend who cared about me. And by the time we went to Metallica concert, it just happened that Noddy had drifted away same way Phil did, as I mentioned before. So like even at a time when I went to Metallica with Chris, a handful of ableist bullies from my year level each dropped out of school, which gave me a safe passage to finally socially interacting with people who are the same age as me and in the same year level as me. And I was able to nurture my friendships from high school for once and for all. So like, I began nurturing my friendship with Nathan and Matt, and then finally, my friendship with John did finally nurture, and also, I became friends with a person named Nick. So like, after Metallica concert that night, I didn't speak to Chris at all, because I was just too busy with my studies in year 12, since this was my last year of high school. So like, instead, I became friends with Nick as he actually turned 18. Despite that, we shared a common interest in techno and also Nick liked Metallica too. So like, Chris was already beginning to make new friends despite that he wanted to still cling on to me and still continue friendship despite being his friend. But at that time though, like I was establishing my own friends from that school. So like it was towards the end of year 12 I only got through to having Nick over at my house just this once, which was actually so awkward, despite that we all wanted to listen to techno. Well, my brother actually decided to make the rules that there's to be no techno, so we ended up being listening to Metallica, so I didn't really get that kind of free spirit as I would have. So like, as it happens though, like, Nick came over from high school, so like, no one from my school came over since Andrew back in 1994. 
So until that one time from John and Nathan, I did get social invitations for their social activities outside of school hours. So instead, my parents need me around the house to look after my seven year old sister since they had a lot of things happening at the time. So they relied me to tow this rope. So like I was forced to decline those meaningful social invitations with my real friends from real high school, which is just like the real life story of actually like the 1986 movie The Labyrinth starring David Bowie. So that was a real life scenario. Anyway, just made me feel depressed and disappointed. So I'm just gonna have to leave that story there. So then after that, it was all graduation time. So I'm gonna continue this story in episode 167 from Aspie with Attitude. This had been such a long video. This is why I had to divide this whole video contents into three parts. And now for part two, which is going to be episode 167. I'll take you through year 1999 after finishing high school. And then I'm going to continue my story about friends that I had from 1999 up to 2010 which is going to be the 17th of September 2010, the day when my father died from a stroke. So like, please don't forget to subscribe and use the notification bell if you just want to see what's going on. So anyways, time to sign off though. Like even though I've already done the fidget spin nose trick for this video content, I'm going to say, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening, and I hope you enjoyed this video from SB Attitude. This video content will continue in episode 167. Peace and respect. See you in episode 167.